Today, Dave and I are super excited to speak with a true entrepreneur and land investing phenom, JT Olmsted. In addition to sharing a single deal that will likely net him over a million dollars, JT is sharing a new tool that land investors are going to love. This interview is packed with so many wow moments, you won't want to miss it. So without further ado, here's our interview with JT Olmsted. If there's one thing I've learned in my business career, it's that I don't have all the answers. Look, I'm an ambitious guy, and I like to make progress fast. The secret to achieving success fast is to harness the brain power of other people in the community. That's what the Land.MBA Smart Bar is all about. As veteran investor Jesse Marchand said, the Smart Bar gave me the motivation and knowledge I needed to push through the tough times and accelerate my path to success. Seven-figure investor Mitch Milam likes to say, there's one meeting each week that I never miss. It's the Land.MBA Smart Bar. It's like happy hour with my land investing buddies. I always learn something. So if you want to network with like-minded people, make new friends, learn heaps, get questions answered, answer questions for others, learn new strategy, get accountability, and overall, get inspired while having a great time, check out the Land.MBA Smart Bar. For a short time, podcast listeners can get 20% off the annual plan, which comes to an insane $86 per month. Compare this to other programs which charge $250 a month or more. This is hands down the best deal you're going to find and the best way to invest in your success. So don't wait. Please go to land.mba slash mastermind. That's land.mba slash mastermind and use promo code podcast22 to join today. Hello, all you gorgeous entrepreneurial land investors. This is Howard Zonder with my partner, David Van Steenkist. And we are very privileged today to have the one, the only JT Olmsted. So anybody who's been in the industry for a while probably has heard this name. Uh, but he is about to become a much more important person in the industry, and we're going to get to that in a little bit. Uh, but uh, before we get any further, welcome, JT. It's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Absolutely. How's that weather so, down in Arizona these days? It is a very cold 60 degrees, so Oof. I think I can live with that. <laughs> Well, we've had single digits this week, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm jonesing for it to get up to 28 today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a dry cold, so it's, you know, it's <laughs> right, Colorado. Right, exactly. exactly. That's, what, <laughs> that's what JT says in July when it's 115. It's a dry Yes. <laughs> yes very dry. I, when I lived in Phoenix, I had this t-shirt and it had a skeleton holding a beer and he said, yeah, but it's a dry heat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spot on. Yep, that's a good old one. All right, so what are we talking about today, folks? I think we're just talking about JT. He, well, we're just, he's <laughs> there, the man, there, and we're going to talk. We're going to talk JT. And there's JT, a lot you know, to you, talk about. You've been you've been at this game for a while now. You've had some uh, pretty pretty fantastic success, but uh, just you know, everybody always wants to hear the backstory. We want to kind of say, well, what did you do before? And, you know, what was that moment where you said, you know what, I'm ready to make this transition into entrepreneurship and into, and into land specifically. Tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got into land. Yeah. So I um, first got started in IT when I got my career rolling and um, I spent about seven or eight years doing network engineering and during that time, I was pretty obsessed with investments, saving, investing, just kind of kind of growing my wealth slowly. And uh, I always had real estate as one of those items that I should get serious about. And I'd check it out and I'd listen to bigger pockets and I'd you know, just check out different things, but um, never quite never quite got around to doing it until about mid-2017, I decided, all right, this is it. This is the year. I'm going to make this happen. And I went out and bought an office complex which was, in retrospect, an absolutely horrible idea, but it finally got, got me going. So I bought this office complex uh, on the west side of Phoenix and um, closed on that in early 2018. 
And uh, I was like, okay, great. Now I'm into real estate. We're going to get this figured out and uh, it'll be great. So I ran into, immediately ran into a ton of issues because I had literally no idea what I was doing and um, proceeded to lose $100,000 on that investment over the next two years. So that was a steep learning curve. But uh, during that time, around mid-2018, I uh, came across land. And um, once I came across land, I realized, oh, man, this is so much better. Why, why am I not doing this all the time? Uh, and I immediately started setting out postcards and trying to get deals and, you know, just kind of starting into the process. And, and I got super lucky on my first mailer there uh, and, and got like a slam dunk deal and then proceeded to really screw up for six months after that. But I knew after that first deal that it worked. Uh, so I was really just trying to say, OK, I, I know it can be done. Other people say it can be done. I've seen it work once. How do I get this to work repeatedly? Uh, and that took a little bit of time for me to figure that out. But once I got the machine kind of dialed in, then it's just like, you know, I was letting you guys know printing money. You're just like, okay, how much money do I want? Okay, I'm going to send more mail and make that much money. So that's interesting. You send postcards. Typically, I mean, we hear over and over again, you know, postcards don't work so well for land. You should send letters, but the postcards work for you. They, they did at the beginning. Yeah. When I first got started, uh, I took a uh, Seth Williams course over at RA Tipster and, um, uh, it was what, four or five years ago now. And that uh, the, he recommended postcards as one of the options. And I was like, man, I'm so clever. I'm going to send 500 green postcards out to these people in Arizona and I will make like, fit, you know, shooting fish in a barrel. It'll be great. I Part of it was just that it was five years ago and competition was a little bit lower. Yeah. And uh, part of it was that I just got straight up lucky, but I found a guy who had 13 properties who wanted to sell them to me. Uh, wow. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, let, let's talk. Uh, come to find out he was actually a, a tax lien investor. So there was some title issues in the 13 properties. Uh, and I, I being completely new and totally nervous, drove to all 13 properties in the state and like took a look at them and took some pictures and, and kind of checked everything out. And uh, then I went to meet him for breakfast because uh, he was here local, a local guy and uh, sat down and said, look, 10 of these properties are kind of garbage. I really don't want them. They just have no access. And they're just tiny and weird shapes and I don't want them. But these other three are really good. Um, how about I buy them just these three nice ones from you? And so we negotiated a price and um, and then I ended up buying, like basically self-closing them at $50,000. And uh, I ended up self-closing them, figuring out the title problem over the next six months to a year. Uh, but I ended up selling that fifty thousand dollars in property for about a hundred and sixty. So I made plenty of money on that deal to say yes, land is great. Now let me go do this again. Uh, it just took a while to to work those kinks out. Yeah, that's right. a great story. Can I? I want to just interject there real quick for our audience because um, there's a lesson there that I I talk about a lot because you hear on uh, a lot of Facebook forums and whatnot. You'll see people talking about excluding corporate owned because they don't want to, you know, mail other land investors, which I mean, who cares? But uh, a lot, there are a lot of tax lien investors out there that they don't want actually the properties, especially land. They don't know how to dispo them. They just want to get a return on their money and, and hope that their um, the owners redeem and that they don't actually have to take the property. You know, sometimes they don't redeem and they take the properties and these, uh, but many of these, um, these tax lien investors do hold them in an LLC. And so I, I have definitely been the beneficiary of, the, of hitting the right couple of tax lien investors, not on purpose. They just happen to be on my mailer and uh, a, a corporation on the list and, you know, made a lot of money. So people don't leave corporate owned off your mailing list. If you want, you know, go through it after you've downloaded it. And if you know some names of companies that you want to just manually tick off, do that. So just I wanted to interject that for the audience. Go ahead, JT. Well, yeah, actually, I, I, I've got an interjection as well, because <laughs> I think there's another lesson in this. It was it's a great story. Uh, so uh, one of my favorite philosophers is a guy named Goethe. He's a German guy. Some people pronounce it Goeth, but I think it's technically Goethe. And, uh, and, and he wrote, uh, whatever you think you can do or believe you can do, begin it. Action has magic, grace, and power in it. And, you know, the more updated version of that is the harder you work, the luckier you get. 
And uh, it reminds me a little bit when we had Trevor Hartsock on the podcast, and he was talking about how he was uh, working a, a county in California, uh, which wasn't going all that well. But in that process, he met a guy whose family wanted to sell a couple hundred properties in Missouri. And he ended up buying a couple hundred properties in Missouri <laughs> and did really, really well. Well, you know, those kinds of crazy situations only come when you put yourself out there and when you get the mail out the door. And uh, yeah, you're going to get lots of singles and doubles, but you just never know when that triple and that home run is going to come. Yeah. But it only comes when you put yourself out there. Exactly. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, it's, uh, that action definitely leads to a lot more opportunity. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. And I, I have also seen... I've personally had multiple deals where I've made six figures or multiple six figures landing, uh, mailing corporate owned. So I, de I never exclude them on my list. They can, all the land investors can get all my mail. I'm totally okay with that. Exactly. Me too. <laughs> it's, I mean, you, at the end of the day, even if you filtered out, what do you save? 20 bucks on the mailer when you could have made hundreds yeah, of thousands? <laughs> yeah, it's totally fine. It'll make it up on the back end. No doubt. Exactly. Exactly. Right on. Cool, cool. All right, so you made, so you did that first, that first mailer. You made six figures on your, on your first mailing, which is phenomenal, and, uh, and so it, it's, I think it's interesting because, as a, as a guy with an engineering background, you have a certain way of thinking, which is mm -hmm. around process and optimization and things like mm -hmm. that. But, but you asked the right question, which is okay. Now, how do I take this one off? And how do I make it, you know, completely uh, reproducible and uh, and rely and reliable? And so, just take. And I, I think it's really important point because not everybody has your background, and you know, a lot of people will just say, okay, just send more mail and keep turning the crank and doing what they're doing, um, as opposed to really thinking in terms of how do I, what's the process, and how do I optimize. So just take us through that what what happened between that first one and that, that next six months and how you optimized yeah so when i first after that first batch and and basically landed this great deal i uh i sent 500 for the first batch because i was you know it's kind of chest the waters a little bit and the next batch i thought man if i got this much for 500 i'm going to get so much more if i send 5,000. so i sent 5,000 postcards like as my next mailer or the mailer after that pretty quickly and um i got like 12 phone calls total and absolutely no deals <laughs> it was like what happened like how is it that that first deal led me you know the first batch led to me such an amazing set of deals and i got nothing out of like 10 times as much mail what did i do something wrong the question was like what did i do wrong right like there's clearly something i did wrong so uh i ended up trying all kinds of stuff. I switched to blind offers. I switched to uh, neutral letters. I tried all kinds of things. I tried info lots. I tried uh, different states. I tried everything. I was just running around trying different stuff for about 18 months. And I got maybe a handful of deals, some okay, some not so great, you know, really just experimenting. And I kind of knew I was experimenting. I just wanted to see what really fit. Um, and that lasted all the way through about 20, end of 2019. I distinctly remember at the end of 2019, sitting down and thinking, okay, I had quit my job at this point because I'm so confident this is going to work. And I still have not really dialed in how to like turn this into a true machine. Like what, what is it that I is working for me and what's not working and, and what am I wasting my time on? Yeah. So once I really like stopped and took that moment to kind of reflect, I realized that, man, I, I prefer... I prefer rural. I prefer like five acres and up. Um, and I like it in states that have good owner finance rules. So then I started a quest, you know, to dial in which states work for that and, you know, what, what areas should I be targeting? And then in, in 20, beginning of 2020, I sent out, I don't know, maybe 20,000 units at the beginning of the year. Um, and right, right before COVID lined, lined up a bunch of deals and, um, and that was successful. It lined a bunch of deals for me, got that closed over the next few months, you know, and um, and really made good sales in, in 2020. And I thought, okay, I've got it figured out. And then in, you know, in 2021, again, I kind of cranked it up even harder and um, and then that did twice as many deals and sent a bunch more mail, you know, uh, and then kind of that's kind of continued, right? I continue to like crank it up and dial it in uh, every year trying to double my previous year's revenue. Nice. Very good. Love it. I, I like that. I mean, you, you said, okay, this is what my target situation is. 
Now let me do an analysis to find out what are the right areas to optimize to that target. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice. So then, so you have a couple of years. So then you come through the COVID years, which was just the golden time for, for land. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was it. Well, and, I, and I actually don't know if it was because of COVID or because of the George Floyd, Floyd riots, but maybe it was a combination of both. But whatever it was, it was people leaving the cities and looking, looking to get away. And uh, it was good for land. Um, and... Uh, and I guess things are, are cranking, cranking in your, in your land business and you got bored. Is that what it was? You needed a new, you needed a new project to keep your, your mind going. What's going <laughs> Yeah, that's me. Things get too easy in the land business. You know, you just cranked out the money. So you're like, okay, let's do something else. I, I am, <laughs> I am prone to side projects. If I start getting distracted, there's no doubt. Uh, but the, in particular, the led to this side project was, um, I really, part of my focus that I decided on at the end of 2019 was that, I mean, I really want um, good owner, like a good set of owner finance. I want a mix of owner finance. And that's part of one of the things I chose in these, in my, my target areas right now is I want an area where I'm going to sell a fair amount for owner finance. Like I would love, you know, 40 to 50% to be owner finance if I can get my money back in 12 months, right? It's my, my current rule. And um, that, that kind of led me to looking like, like what, what options do I have to help manage this portfolio, you know, this growing portfolio? And um, I looked at the current solutions kind of around the space and I tried a couple of different things and I used those for a while um, and they, they were fine, but they didn't I think quite, the more I spent time on them, the more I like kind of wasn't impressed. They didn't meet all my needs. The things seemed a little um, challenging where they could have been easy or uh, yeah. a little bit um, inaccurate sometimes. And I, and I, and as one of the last things I did in my IT career before I left was I spent a lot of time testing other systems. So I had, you know, I'd, I'd seen what good systems look like. And that was kind of my job at the end of my IT career was like decide if the system was good or not and how it could get better. Um, and so I kind of have a, a little bit of a penchant for that. And um, after kind of figuring that out, that I, I wasn't quite satisfied with what was available, I uh, started looking for alternatives um, at probably around the beginning of 2021. And it's been about six months just to, talking to all kinds of different companies that specialize in note software, everything from kind of the, the basic do any kind of loan software to companies that sold their software to like note management firms, you know, like company. And then, then they had, you know, they could, you could handle tens of thousands of notes on, you know, just for yourself on these platforms. They're kind of made for that. Um, but the pricing was all over the place. The ease of use was all over the place. Uh, it was, it was kind of just a, a wide space and I really didn't find anything in there that I thought, man, this is going to be great. This is going to be like uh, maybe a little more expensive or whatever, but it, it's going to have everything I want and it's going to be easy to use and my note buyers are going to love it and it's going to be going to make my life better. Uh, so I, after looking all over, I realized I, if I want what I have in mind, I'm literally going to have to build it. Uh, and then quickly realized after getting into that, that if I'm going to build it for me, I might as well just build it for other people because it's not that much more effort to get other people involved if I'm going to build a whole software suite to support my own portfolio. So kind of led into the project we have now. Fantastic. That, that's that's kind of how Landspeed got started too, is I I wasn't really happy with, with the options that were out there. So I, I built it literally just for my own business. And uh, when I got it to a point I was happy, I showed it to other land investors and they're like, well, this is good. We want this. And uh, not being an engineer, I uh, I really had to like, okay, now what do I do? How do I how do I figure out how to sell this? Thing? <laughs> so that was sort of something I had to figure out after I had <laughs> built it. But uh, yeah, that's that's fantastic. You know, you find a need in the marketplace and and fill it. That's that's great. That's awesome. So so just if you can just point out maybe one or two or a couple of. Uh, so well, for, I guess first we should define what this is. So I, you mentioned note management. So this is a, a note management tool, right? Yeah, this is a, a exactly. It's a note management platform uh, built for land investors, right? Just to help them manage their owner finance portfolios. And it's called and, Your Land Loans. Yourlandloans.com. Yep, exactly. That's it. That's the place. Fantastic. So, so just tell us like one, two, three, uh, aspects of this solution that are completely unique and differentiated and of, will be of great value to land investors. 
Yeah, so good. It's a good question. So I think the the couple different things that um, really the things that drove me to create the platform in the first place um, kind of fall into a couple different um, arenas. The first one for me was about uh, was about accounting accuracy, right, and 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 ease of use. Uh, because uh, like at the at the end of the day, that's really what a note software should be: is how easy is it to count up all the pennies that have to be, you know, for each of these notes? Like, what do they owe me in interest? And uh, you know, at the end of the year, how much do they they get paid? So, uh, for that's a kind of a primary focus for me is making the accounting part as simple as possible because it's really a pain if you have to kind of be jumping back and forth. Uh, between these platforms and QuickBooks and whatever else you're using to try and keep it up to date so you can fill out 1098s or you can make sure that you're reporting to Missouri or whatever, how much money and interest you made. So um, I, I my goal is to make that is a very streamlined process uh, and, and make sure that on the site, it's very clear how much each uh, buyer uh, made. Um, you know, or how much uh, each buyer I should pay paid in this case, how much you made. And um, what, what, you know, what's the breakdown on each of the payments? How do the, the months look? Um, and how accurate is it, right? I, I've, I've gone so far as to um, hire a third party financial analyst to review the, the calculations, right? To make sure that like they're as tight as they can be, right? Uh, and software, there's, and it's always inevitable for software to have some kind of hiccups, you know, but we do our absolute best to make that like as rock solid as possible and, and easy to go over. Um, in addition to that, I think the other two arenas for me really come down to uh, kind of buyer engagement. Um, I I'm I'm kind of kind of based on the kind of loan, owner financing I do. I have a, a kind of a certain level of trust with my buyers that they can get you know get the job done. They can get involved, and um, we make sure that you know there's a little bit of support for the buyers there that we have their engagement throughout the process. And that um, even if we are um, helping them along, that uh, they have the they have the ability to make decisions, right? Uh, and we give them the support to kind of keep pushing them in the right direction. That's because you know part of the challenge I think that comes up with a lot of software is that if if we, there's too much that's done on the buyer's behalf without their permission, there's a certain level of um, risk that can come in, right? Or, or they claim they weren't involved, they didn't make that decision, they whatever. So one of the focuses of the, the platform is making sure that there's kind of an easy buyer consent, right? So the buyers don't said yes, I did approve to that, or yes, I here's the here's the, I already you know I clicked this button and they said yes, I can do it um, to make those payments. So we try and make that a, a part of that so that you can easily support your buyers, but that they're still involved in the process. Um, and I kind of lastly, I think for me, it was also about seeing the notes in, in a holistic view, right? So we spent um, some time on building out dashboards, right? That make it so that I can see kind of the, all the view of my notes, right? Like uh, how much am I bringing in each month? Like, have I collected at all? What percentage hasn't been collected? Like, how are my notes doing? Um, what's my trend as far as like growth or whatever? So um, I, that's one sort of the things that I, I want to see um, and for the whole portfolio and not just one or two notes, because that, that stuff is easy to manage at, at one, two, three notes. Um, but when you start to get to more, you want to be able to see kind of everything um, at, at a certain level. And so that's something we've, we're focusing on as well on, on the platform. That's great. That's great. One of the things I've always wanted to have, you know, and I kind of have to just do it manually and put it in a spreadsheet is, you know, can I look at my portfolio and, you know, sort of, uh, let's say, sort them based on when their schedule payoff is, I and mean, people can always pay off early, but I want to, you know, get a snapshot of, for my cash flow, you know, going, okay, I've got these now. Also, to be able to know, to be able to know, I kind of my recapital so I can actually start spending the money from that. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That ability to see those, those kind of trends um, are, yeah, I think critical, <laughs> right. And, um, those are the kind of things that we're, we're, we're building and continuing to build out on, on the dashboard and kind of integrated to the platform. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. We had, we had Eddie speed on the podcast and Eddie talks a lot about buying, not buying and selling. Well, he talks about buying and selling notes, but mm -hmm. he also talks about buying and selling note portfolios. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. to be able to have those dashboards and be able to, to position it and say, okay, this is, you know, this is what the, the, the current status is of my notes, and this is how they've been performing and, and all the rest. 
uh, if if somebody was in the situation where they wanted to sell either a note or a portfolio, you now have the ability to do that because you've got the the data. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, data da having the data opens up all kinds of opportunities for sure. Right. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Very cool. So, kind of two standard questions here, right? I'm going back to land for a moment. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the best deal you ever did. Best deal I ever did. Um, I would say I'm actually right in the middle of the best deal I ever did. Um, we sent out a batch of mailers in the spring and um, got back uh, on one of the agreements, um, a property that was probably worth about, I don't know, 500 as, a, as was. And they agreed to sell at 110. And we were like, yes, I accept. That would be excellent. Uh, let's close this immediately. So um, that was that was going to be great. It gets even better, though, because that deal, we realized after a, a pretty straightforward minor land division, uh, turned into a 1.1 to 1.2 deal. And so... We spent like two months, got the survey finished, didn't cost like, I don't know, maybe five, ten thousand dollars to get everything done because it was a, a kind of an expensive survey. Uh, but but after that, I was like, okay, so we buy it one, a hundred, you know, a hundred, maybe 120 after all in, and we're gonna sell it like 1.2. Uh, and we're in the middle of that right now. We've got the first first block of that closing on Friday. Uh, and uh that should be that should be a smoking deal <laughs> when we finish all the way. But I can't count it until it fully hat hatches, but it's, I, I have no doubt it's going to be solid. So that. that's, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. God, I love this business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff. No problem have a tax problem. <laughs> <laughs> that is the kind of problem I'm willing to tackle, you know? Yeah, right. Big, exactly. Problem. Big tax problems yeah. are good problems to have. Yep, those it's it fully acceptable first world problem. Well, especially when you know it's uh you, you, when you know it's coming, so you can mm. uh, you've got all year to to uh, do tax planning. <laughs> yes, yeah, I tried to. I, I'm working on owner financing some of it as well to spread out just a little bit, but yeah, yeah absolutely, gotcha, gotcha. I I I had uh, two years ago. I had a big deal close and closing in December, and it I didn't expect it to sell that soon. I'm like. Mm. Can we push the closing to January? Because <laughs> then I have some time to do tax planning. <laughs> they agreed. Yes. They didn't have to buy it in December. So that was good. <laughs> uh, that's perfect. Yeah. That's yeah, straddling that line is pretty, pretty critical for some deals. That's very good. All right. Well, cool. So this your your new product, your land loans, it's launched, it's ready, it's available and for everybody, or is it still in beta? No, ready we're uh, we're ready to rock. So people can head awesome. on over and sign up and check it out anytime. Yeah, just um, just you can hit up the website, see some of the details, features, pricing, stuff like that, and um, there's good. an option there to sign up. Very good. Now let's so it's say yourlandloans.com, uh, right? Yep. Exactly. Yep. Your now we'll have that in the notes. Very good. Perfect. Now your uh, one one more question. Um, if uh, if somebody wants to to move over from a Another platform or whatnot with um, is is there any kind of a a, a data export uh, feature or you pretty much still got to enter them in manually? You know, unfortunately, most of the platforms um, that people will be moving from, as far as I'm aware, and if I'm don't wrong, do please an email me. Yeah, they yeah. don't they don't yeah. offer exports. They yeah. they don't make the moving out easy, which is another thing for me. That's like it's your data. You should be able to download it, right? So that's one of the features I have right on the website. So you want to download your data? It's right here. Just awesome. click the button. It's all yours. Awesome. Congratulations, you know, but uh, yeah. I love that. If, I wish I wish that was a thing, but no, it's not quite the case. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we we do have it uh, as streamlined as possible at the moment to, to export and you can backdate. I mean, you can recreate existing loans easily on the platform. You can backdate five years and recreate payments or whatever you want to do. Um, cool. I've had people do it lots of different ways, but we do have it fully set up so that uh, doing things like backdate payments or, or recreate existing loans is, is easy. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I, 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 I really like what you said about that in, in, in other words, uh, cause I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I like what you said about the fact that yours is more of like, say, you know, open system. So, Hey, it's your data. I like that philosophy. I don't, I don't like companies that try to try to lock you in um because you know what 
that it's just, Hey, it's capitalism, baby. Let's mm-hmm. let the, the best performers and the best products win. Yeah, absolutely. If I'm not doing the best, then by all means head somewhere else. I will, I'll, <laughs> I'll either make it better or I'll get you back. I'll promise. I'll, we'll make it worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, very cool. Well, I think we're, we're coming up towards time. Um, any other questions or comments, anything else you want to say about your, uh, your new product, JT? You know, I, I appreciate a chance to talk a little about uh, kind of my story and that, that product we've got. But um, the only thing I think I would worth mentioning is that so right now, uh, through the end of February, um, we are kind of a, as a thank you to anyone who can jump on the platform and get subscribed, we are offering a 10% lifetime discount. So if you sign up for something before the end of February for one of the plans, then uh, we'll lock you in 10%, no matter the plan we, we have, you know, through the, the, the lifetime of the product for you. Beautiful. Beautiful. What a deal. Awesome deal. That's uh, people take advantage of it. Know this gentleman, and uh, I know that anything he builds is going to be built with integrity. So, with that, folks, uh, I bid you adieu. We hope you enjoyed this episode, had a bit of fun, and walked away with some actionable insights that you can apply to your business. Dave and I have got some great content and interviews planned, so don't forget to rate and review, and of course, subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. If we mention any interesting links or tools, you'll find them in the show notes. To learn more about Land.MBA, visit our website at, wait for it, Land.MBA. See you next time on the Land.MBA podcast.